Okay, folks, welcome back to Adventures in Vietnam. Uh, another glorious day here. Uh, sorry for the hiatus, but um, I've, been, uh, I've been busy, been working and doing many other things. Also, it's been pissing rain for on and off for like the last couple of weeks with intermittent days of glorious sunshine. And those days I've been out doing other activities. Um, so while it's been raining, I kept myself busy. The only way to keep myself busy, which I like to do, is to get on with the brewery stuff. Now, if you look behind me, you can see I've got uh, the 100 litre vessels. They came a few months ago, maybe two months ago, they arrived in the post. And locally, I bought the electric box that you saw me spray painting in the garden. Now, the electric box is like this now. And this is the control panel for craft brewing. Now, not everyone uses this. Some people use gas, some people use electric, um, some simple electric forms. But I'm building this because I want to make a brewery, a microbrewery. And then I'll start off with single phase, which uh, this is 220 volts, single phase. And then one things, once things progress, maybe from 100 litres up to 300 litres, I'll need uh, three phase, and then I'll alter the interior of this to match that. But in the first step, brewing beer, I'm going to use single phase, 220 volts, and this is what's going to control these three vessels behind me. So if you look, uh, this one here, this is the boil kettle. And if you look, it's got two metal things protruding. They are 6,500 volt heating elements. And I will show you them in a minute. I'll slip a photo in to show you what they are. So they're single phase, 220 volts, 6,500 watts. And there's two of them. Here we go, next one. This is gonna be the hot liquor tank, which is containing water, basically. So all the water that I need to brew is gonna go in here. And it's got one single 6,500 volt element in there. Six, six, blah, blah, blah. It's got one 6,500 watt element. So that's going to be enough to boil the water or bring it up to like 80 degrees. Um, and the final one, this is the mash tun. And that, that doesn't have any element in it. That's going to be heated by this one here. And the water is going to be recirculated using one of these switches here to circulate water in the pump. So let me explain. Let's go through the panel. So the panel has 220 volts coming in here and that'll bring power on to everything. And the power coming in will come up here on the voltmeter and that'll show me how much power I'm receiving and then it'll show me how much power I'm using. Um, first, this thing here is a temperature controller. It's a PID. Uh, you can look that up if you don't know. PID, PID. Uh, this one's an automatic and manual controller, and this is going to control the, the boil kettle behind me. So when I switch that on, um, that'll light up and it'll show me how much temperature this, the pot is sitting at. And if I switch this one on, this will show me what the mash tun is at. And I'll switch this one on that will show me what temperature the um, hot liquor tanks are. And these two are automatic because there's no manual control. But this one's manual control because when you're boiling, you want to reduce the power that the boil is using to prevent overboiling. Like when you boil milk, sometimes if the temperature gets too hot, it will overflow out of the pan. So with the high sugar content in the boil kettle, um, you can get a boil over quite easy. So what you do is you use the manual mode to reduce the amount of power and maintain a, a simmering uh, boil rather than a really vigorous boil. Both are okay, but not with these um, 100 litre pots. The, you don't want a boil over, basically. Okay, so from the PIDs onto the timer. Now this timer just controls how long the process is taking. So for example, when I'm heating the water, from um, probably 20 degrees, maybe ground is maybe 20 degrees, say. Summer, maybe a little bit higher. So I'll time how long it takes to get from 20 degrees to 80 degrees, and that'll give me a rough estimate how long I need to be in the brewery early in the morning to get the water up to temperature. And, um, and also, when I'm boiling, I boil, I boil for about an hour. So I'll use the timer to time that. And also, when I'm using the mash PID, 
I'll mash for one hour to convert the sugars um, in the starch, sorry, the, sh the starch enzymes into sugars that are fermentable. So that's about an hour there to use this one, about an hour to use this one. And roughly, I don't know, from 20 degrees up to 80 degrees, depends. Um, okay, let's go down from there. The yellow lamps, they're for each heating element. So in the boil kettle, there's two of them, and in the HLT, there's one of them. And then these lamps here is for the alarm. So that's the alarm on, and that's a reset button. So I just push that button, that'll just reset the timer. And um, these are connected to the timer here. When it reaches a certain time, the, the alarm will go off. Also, um, the PIDs are temperature controlled. So when it reaches a certain temperature, this will also, the alarm will trigger and warn me that you are above the temperature or you're below the temperature or you're at the temperature. And I'll just say, so I can use the automatic controller to indicate what's happening with the temperature and whether to put power on or to power off. Okay, let's switch all those off, powers off. Okay, let's go down to the bottom here. We've got um, one of these blue lamps. This is for the pump to recirculate the, the hot boil. And um, this pump here is to recirculate the water in this PID. Now basically what I do is I recycle the water using the pump to get a continuous flow and maintain the temperature. Also, I'll use this pump to, so I'll also use this pump to recirculate the mash, basically. So the, the, while the mash is going, it'll recirculate through that pump in, the, in one of the tanks and it'll maintain the temperature for one hour at 65 degrees, roughly, depending on which beer I'm brewing. If it's a standard ale, it'll be like 50, uh, sorry, 65 degrees. Um, if I'm doing a step mash, I can start lower and I can raise the temperature up slowly over time to get different levels of uh, different kinds of sugars. And you can read about that if you want as well. And it's called a step mash. Um, there are benefits, depends on what beer you're making basically. But standard mash will be 65 degrees for one hour. And that'll give me the best fermentable sugars that I want to get into the boil and then I start adding hops and stuff. But maybe I'll talk about that at a later date. Today I'm just talking about the panel. So as you can see, that's what I've been doing. Let's look at the reverse. So it's not finished yet, but basically the main components are wired. Some of the switch components and lamps have got to be wired, but they're, they're going to be in here and along into the trunking. And then in, once the door is connected to the box, I'll... Um, fit the wires into the trunk in and seal that up and then I'll test everything to make sure it's working again. But as it stands, the PIDs, the lights and the switches are working and the emergency stop button's working. So if there's any problem, I can just whack that quickly and the power to everything will cut out. So I'll let me stand down again. So yeah. Okay, so yeah, there you go, folks. That's what I've been doing on rainy days and that's why I've not been doing any videos. I haven't filmed this because it's boring laborious and um, I had to use my brain quite a lot to make sure I got the wires in the correct order. And there's not even, it's not even all the wiring done yet, but the main parts are done. And that's it, yes, yeah, so there we go. We've gone from an empty box, sprayed red, to all the components fitted, most of them wired. Yeah, these wires here are temperature probes and uh, they're lying on the floor just now. So let me just put this back down. Okay, that is the door done. Okay, let's have a look over here at this one. So yeah, on the rainy days, super busy wiring that bad boy up. And then um, the other head screw has been this one. And I actually, I took all the components out last week and I changed them all around. So, oh dear, I can't even, can I lift it up? Maybe I can't. Some of the components are a bit loose. Maybe I can hold on to them just to show you what's happening in there. This thing weighs a ton. I've got all these bloody wires, microphone wires and cables and stuff. So, okay, there we go. So that's what I'll be making. Have a look in there. We've got power, power relay, um, switches and breakers. And then I've got other power relays for each element. And each element has a breaker, 32 amp breaker for each one, just for safety. Um, so yeah, this is the, the power cable comes in, 
it goes through the first breaker, which is 63 amps. Then it goes into another breaker with an a earth leak te uh, tester on it, so just for an extra level of safety. Then it goes into the main 80 amp breaker, and then from the 80 amp breaker, it separates and goes to each individual 80 amp um, power relay. And then that supplies power to the hot liquor tank and the heating elements. Okay, so as I said earlier, we've got the hot liquor tank, we've got the mash tun, and we've got the boil kettle. Now, if you look behind me, the boil kettle, which is this one here, it's got uh, two 3,500 watt elements. So let's have a look inside those. Okay, so as you can see here, look, this is the stainless steel housing with the um, cable gland there. So the cable will go in there and it'll be watertight. Let me just unscrew that. Okay, there we go. And that's single phase, live and neutral, or live and neutral, they're interchangeable. And then you've got the earth connector there, which is super important. You need an earth connector when you're using electricity and water in combination. So you can look on there, there's two of them. They are welded with a special sealant to the outside of the pot. And then on the inside, as you'll see here, there are two heating elements. They're crossing over each other. One of them's arching down so it can heat the base of the pot. And the other one's arching up, which is going to heat the upper part of the volume of the water or the beer, which is going to be in there. I should say wort sugary brown wort okay so let's just slip over to the it's the uh, hot liquor tank and it's got one 6500 watt uh, heating element and again just on the outside it's um, welded onto the outside by a special sealant and then bolted on all stainless steel and then you've got the special water tight cable gland there and that'll connect to the electric box via some um, three core cable with a earth inside. Okay, and then just a simple mash tun, which isn't complete yet because I've got a few things to do inside. <clears throat> but there you go, folks. That is the brewery system as it stands. Okay, so next, let's have a look inside the control panel a little bit more closely and look in detail at the, the power relays on the breakers. Let's have a look. Okay, so thanks very much for watching and for any new viewers, please hit the bell, um, subscribe and please continue watching Adventures in Vietnam. Watch our channel grow and watch the craft beer flow. Cheers. Bye.